Beverly Bass didn't just break through the glass ceiling, she flew right through it. In 1976, the then 24-year-old became one of American Airlines' first female pilots. Ten years later, she became their first female captain. And in 1986, she led the first all-female crew in the history of commercial jet aviation. Beverly's incredible story was turned into a hit Broadway musical... And she's with us on the couch now. It's great to see you, Beverly. Hey. Thank you. Welcome. <laughs> now, you actually wanted to fly for as long as you uh, could remember, but how many times were you actually rejected and asked if you were a flight attendant? Well, quite a few times, That's actually, a... in the beginning, because I did my flying in Texas before I was hired by American. Wow. So it was a little bit challenging to get the experience to be in a position where you could actually apply to the airlines. What was their reason? What did that? What was the reason that they gave well, you? Well, they just said they couldn't have a girl flying their airplanes because what would the wives of the executives think? <gasps> oh, that was the reason. <laughs> yes. Wow. Oh, that is our reason. <laughs> now we all remember, of course, the 11th of September 2001. You were in the air flying from the UK to Dallas when the twin towers were hit. What happened? I actually was flying from Paris to Dallas. Thank you. Close. Paris to Dallas. And, um, you know, it was just a gorgeous day outside and we were westbound, just eating lunch, having a, a great time in the cockpit. And Who was flying the plane? Uh, well, the autopilot <laughs> at that time, because we're in cruise. Mm -hmm. And uh, we heard on our air-to-air -air frequency that one of the towers had been hit. And, you know, we thought it was a light airplane. And then about 20 minutes later, we heard the second tower had been hit. And with that, they said the word airliner and also terrorism. Wow. So once you knew that it was deliberate, not an accident, not an accident, were you terrified because you didn't know what, who was next? No, what because next? we really didn't know those details didn't. at that time. So, so you didn't realise that another plane could be next? Because there no, were two more planes, no. obviously. No, we didn't know course. anything about the hijackers or right. anything. Mm. You know, we were just getting but, bits and pieces of information, right. but, but that, not How much. did that change your job and your life and flying after that? Well, it has changed everybody's yeah. lives. You know, really all over the world. We live in a world now that was dictated by the events of 9-11. Mm. So it changed for us immensely. You know, security procedures yep. are different. And um, all the airlines had to convert their cockpit doors to be bulletproof. Wow. And, um, and, and our security is very different within the airplane itself. It, how, it, how so? I'd love to know that. If there's well, something that happens like that again... We're not really able to share everything because with the public. However, just for us to be able to leave the cockpit and go to the restroom, there are procedures. They have to bring the service cart up that kind of blocks the passengers wow. from having right. access to the pilots or the cockpit. Wow. So subtle changes like that have occurred. Mm. Wow. And um, I, I, I heard that you were part of the first female crew in the introduction we mentioned. Yes, but only with American Airlines. We right. had the first all-female crew. And did you, did you follow through with that where you had to have all-male flight attendants who were then sexually harassed by the female <laughs> You know, so, I did have that a couple of times and it is so much fun to have yeah. all guys <laughs> in the back. The other thing I want to ask you about before we get to the, the new musical, which is fantastic, is um, there's obviously, I mean, flying, even though we know in our heads it's an incredibly safe way to travel, it is still something that um, dominates, I suppose, the human consciousness, almost like we don't feel like we should be in the air. And, and there have been um, uh, the, the two incidents with the Boeing 737 MAX 8s recently, which there's still an ongoing sort of investigation into. Do you... It, 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 is, 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 is flying as safe as it used to be? Is it as... Uh, is, Absolutely. Is everything OK? <laughs> oh, my goodness. It is so safe. And when you think about the millions and millions of miles that we fly and passengers, you know, year after year, it, it, it is just incredible. And I think it was 2000, maybe 17, there was not a single fatality in the no. US. Wow. And that is yeah. hard to imagine. And yes. planes aren't like the computerization of planes hasn't sort of made us too reliant on. No, <laughs> no. Okay, now, Beverly, I'm fascinated that, that this tragedy, that the 9 11, actually has led to a Broadway musical. Um, in some obscure way. Can you explain that? Who you would have the ever thought that that yeah, would So how did that happen? You're the subject of a Broadway musical. Oh, you know, we were invited back to Gander on the 10th anniversary, and that's when the... So Gander is... Gander is where we all diverted to. 38 wide bodies diverted on 9-11 to Gander. 
a town of 9,400 people, and we were nearly 7,000 passengers and crew. Wow. wow. And we showed up in a three-hour period, and we stayed for five days. Wow. In Gander, wow. which is like yes. Newfoundland, yeah? yeah? Yes, it's a very tiny little town. Yes. And so the musical was written with about that? It's really about the people of Gander and all the wonderful things that they did for us while we were there during that time. Is that the lady playing you? Is that the is it that is. you? That is Jen Colella. She wow. plays my role on Broadway. And you said the, that the hospitality and the generosity of this beautiful little town, which essentially doubled when all of these aircraft landed there, uh, changed you forever. It did. You know, it just it made me realise that. Um, Doing nice things for people is really the way that we should always live. And it's even better when you do it and nobody knows that you're doing it. You mm. just be kind. And well, that is how they were to us. There was so much uncertainty. I mean, it's hard to go back. You know, we talk about living in a post 9 11 world where, you know, sporadic terrorism is a new normal. Mm. And it's, you know, front. But it must have been in those first few days quite surreal for you when you were, when you, when, when you were there with all these other airline crew and passengers going, oh, my God, what's just happened to our country? Right. Yeah, we, my crew and I stayed at the Comfort Inn in Gander, so we didn't really mingle with the other right. passengers and crew members. I would say the biggest change for me was when I got back to the U.S. and I saw how life for the residents of the United States had really changed. The American flags that were in everybody's yard, that mm. were on everybody's car window, and I think that's when I really realised that things were different. And the right. fact that everyone flew again because they weren't going to have their life changed. Yes, except not for a long time. True, you but know, the eventually. the airports and the airplanes yeah. were virtually empty. Yeah. You are Amazing. such a trailblazer in so many ways. Come From Away opens in Melbourne in July. Would you please put your hands together for the fabulous Beverly Thanks, Thank you.